Okay, welcome back everyone to yet another episode of Hacking Penny Stocks. Today I figured I would make a video on my analysis regarding Solaris Power Cells Incorporated, stock ticker SPCL, since I've received a lot of questions concerning the stock and why I chose not to invest in it. But before we examine the technical facets of the company, I'm going to present some of the apparent obstacles that this company encountered which has triggered some serious red flags. According to some of their older filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission, I found the registered business address was located in Palm Springs, California at a place called the Rabobank Regional Business Center. This particular location is the company headquarters, which, when examined further, is owned by the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership, which is essentially just a business incubator. Many business centers are incubators, which um, basically aids smaller startup companies and businesses by providing services such as management training or office space, which is generally shared among other businesses. What this implies is that SPCL does not have an official office or suite like most traditional businesses. This should be a little concerning to the average investor because it exhibits the company's financial condition. Would a thriving business still be operating out of this incubator? Probably not. But hey, I've seen a lot worse. Some penny stock companies traded in the OTC markets like SPCL are headquartered at the CEO's residence. And not some extravagant multi-million dollar home either, but a small rambler occupied in a low-income neighborhood. SPCL is a nanocap stock. Remember from one of my other videos on how to calculate market capitalization? Just take your price per share multiplied by the total number of outstanding shares. In this case, 0 0.0065 times 104,713,782 shares outstanding to get $680,639.58. I obtained the shares outstanding from their latest submission with the Securities and Exchange Commission back in September of 2015. This brings us to another serious red flag. Legally, you are required to submit filings with the SEC on a quarterly basis, but given that the company has been delinquent and hasn't filed in over a year, their company has been demoted to the OTC Pink Limited Information Division. And I'm not going to get into the details since I've covered the different tiers in my premium video on how to buy and sell penny stocks. And here's where things get a little strange. Well, I guess strange is a bit of a misnomer. I think sad and pathetic is a little more appropriate. And after analyzing their last financial statement with the SEC, for the three months ended September of 2015, SPCL reported a $111 profit. That, that's, wow. Look out, Elon Musk. Solaris is right behind you. A reported $111 profit? I mean, that's, that's pathetic. You can make more money selling Girl Scout cookies than that. And to make matters worse, their operating expenses were $83,629. So their loss from operations was $83,519, as you can see here. Now let's avert our attention to the technical aspect of the company's stock performance. Prior to 2016, there was a sparse quantity of shares being exchanged. According to 8K filing with the SEC back in May of 2016, SPCL entered into a share exchange agreement with a company called Pixel Holdings, which was effective as of April 30th of 2016. Most of the volume amassed right near the beginning of 2016, as you can see here, and has continued up until this day. So it's very probable that someone or a small group of investors begin to accumulate shares of SPCL, probably those who were aware of this deal between SPCL and Pixel Holdings. What these investors did was they simply held onto their stock, waiting for the big climax pattern to transpire, which it did in November of 2016. Once the climax pattern emerged, as you can see here, the early buyers began to sell their positions when the stock reached a high of two cents. Remember my divisible by five rule. The price of the stock touched my divisible by five rule and reversed its course because it could not break that level of resistance. The stock crashed and then quickly rebounded shortly after. Take a look at where the stock price stopped. The highs for both December 2nd and December 5th both reached the previous high set on November 11th at exactly two cents. It's like this invisible barrier had prevented the stock from breaking out. This is what we call a double top pattern. The stock currently has a level of support at 0 0.006 and continues to trade well within this range of 0 0.01 and 0 0.006. Of course, there was this little fake out, but if the stock can sustain a price level above or below this range, expect some more volatility as the price could head further in either direction. Another red flag that was triggered was when the company had engaged in a 1 to 10 reverse split as well as a 1 to 100 reverse split. Now it should raise suspicion when a company executes a reverse split, especially ones that perform a 1 for 10 and a 1 for a 100 reverse split. 
When I look at this chart, it still baffles me that people thought this stock was a great idea to invest in. You know, I've been trading penny stocks for over seven years now, and from my experience, when a stock has a sudden climax or a significant spike, like back in November and early December of 2016, it's when they are compelled into believing that the stock price will perpetuate the same climactic patterns that occurred in the past. Rarely do climax patterns reemerge shortly after they've risen. It could take months, even years, before you see another one, if ever. A lot of penny stocks, especially ones in the OTC market, are driven by nothing more than hope, and substantiated by fairy dust. I actually call this phenomenon hopium. Opium is an analgesic drug that elicits euphoric effects. I use opium in this context because I'm always talking about uh, one state of mind that penny stock traders engage in, which happens to be these euphoric fantasies where they believe by blind faith that the stock will someday recover to their initial highs. So hope plus opium creates these hopeful fantasies mixed with feelings of euphoria that the stock may rise, but sadly, as with many penny stocks in the OTC markets, they never do. But when they wake up and return to reality, it's usually too late. And many penny stock traders who bought the stock are left with nothing but worthless shares. And so, in conclusion, when penny stock traders asked why I didn't buy SPCL, this video is the response to their questions. Don't forget to subscribe below for more videos on hacking penny stocks. Until next time.